Hey up and welcome to another episode of Last Cast. You join us today on the banks of the River Calder, and if this peg looks familiar, that's because it is. We probably fished it around sort of two years ago now, and we had a go down here fishing the stick float, link ledger and the waggler down here. And we did promise, well, actually at the end of that video, that we'd come back and revisit it on the pool. Right, so we've come back it's nearly two years uh, around the same sort of time, sort of same sort of area of season. And the river's in decent condition today. Ideally, I'd have liked it with a bit more flow on it, but there's a tinge of colour, um, so hopefully we'll get a few bites. What we're going to do today is pretty straightforward. We're just going to try and tackle them with one line and fish the pole today, as, like I say, as we promised in that previous video. So with that in mind, I've just set up four rigs. I'm fishing probably about 10 metres out into the river, and it's pretty straightforward stuff. We've got plenty of ground bait mixed up. We're going to be feeding hemp, casters, the odd pinky, hopefully catching on maggot and caster over the top, maybe the odd bit of worm. So with that said, I'll just quickly run through the ground bait that we're going to use today. So I've mixed up quite a lot today because, again, there's quite a few fish in this river and depending on the, on the conditions, you can get through quite a bit of bait. So I've put together about nine pints of dry ground bait, which probably works out about 12 when it's wetted up. And I've just done equal parts. I'm trying this out, the, the uh, spotted fin range today, just for a bit of a change. I'm quite impressed with how it mixes up, to be fair. Nice and sticky, um, sort of traditional roach ground bait. So I've just gone for a third of the super roach, um, a third of the super blend lake, which is a similar sort of ground bait. And then I've just put in, again, a third of Census Magic, which just allows a bit more bread content, a bit more binding property. And it's something I won't go without on this sort of river. And that makes up a nice little ground bait mix. I've already fed five balls onto my 10 metre line um, to start off with. As you can see, nice fine mix, nice and dark, should blend in nicely with the bottom. And we've just got a few casters in there. I've put in 125 ml of caster into five balls, uh, 250 ml of hemp, and I've just put in a pinch of pinkies as well that'll just help the ground bait break up a little bit quicker and also as a bit of a hook bait sample. So again, not tons of loose feed in there because I'm not sure how it's going to fish today. The river's, you know, like I say, fairly low, fairly clear. So I don't want to over egg it from the start. So that's what I've introduced. As I say, I've put five balls of that at 10 metres and I've cut them in from a bit of a height to create a bit of noise, hopefully draw some fish into the area. Now, the peg, as you can see, is pretty steady today. It's, I, can, I was going to set up a flat float if there was a bit more pace on it, but being that it's so slow today, I can hold it dead still with a gram and a quarter rig. So I've set up four, uh, four different rigs. Basically, I've got a strung out rig, a, uh, a bulk down sort of positive rig for catching small fish quickly, and then two sort of more rigs for holding the bait steady for fishing with caster and that sort of thing for some better stamp fish so we'll start with the lightest rig and there's potential today if um if we do start catching a few quality roach that i can go on and use this for for fishing the hemp so at the top end i've just got a number six elastic nice and soft cushions everything perfect for the size of fish that i expect to catch today all the rigs you'll see we've got back shot. Um, we're fishing under a bridge today. The wind can be quite variable down here, so it can sort of be channeled under the bridge or blow up the, the river. So I just want to make sure that I've got control of the line above the float. We've got sort of about seven or eight foot of depth there. And at the top, I've got an old MAP M3 float, nice carbon stem, fairly thick fiber bristle um, and a slim body. And that's just perfect for holding back and running some, uh, some hemp through and also presenting baits like maggots and pinkies and casters on the drop. Shotting wise, I've just got strung tens all the way through the rig, as you can see, starting fairly tight and then spreading out towards the hook length. And then on this one, I've just got um, a five inch hook length of 095 Drennan Suplex Fluorocarbon to an 18 uh, Colmic N957. Main lines on this 014. So nice and light, that's sort of my, my most negative rig. The next rig I've got set up is a, a sense to sort of pattern. So it's the same main line, same uh, hook length and same hook as the previous rig, but just a completely different style of presentation. Presentation. So this is a grand pencil float, again with number six elastic in the top end, but this is for bombing the bait down and getting it straight to where the fish should hopefully be feeding. This is a perfect rig when you're catching a lot of dace and when your peg's infested with small fish, this can really do well. It's, it's very similar to a bread, uh, bread punch rig. So we've just got a bulk there and as you can see, very tightly shotted. Two number nine droppers on this, so really positive. Like I say, that same hook length um, with an 18 and 957 on the bottom. So those are my two sort of small fish rigs, if you like. So one for fishing through the water and one for being really positive and getting it down to the bottom. Then I've just got two other rigs set up and these are more for holding back and trying to catch some better stamp fish. So in the top end of these, we've got number eight solid elastic. Again, back shot, slightly heavier main line on these 016. And I've just got Carpa Gloucesters on these. One's a one gram, the other's a 1.25. 
On the first one, I've just got the bulk and then four number 10 droppers. So I can hold it back and I've set this probably about half an inch or so over depth. It's, like I say, it's barely moving through today. The other two rigs are set dead depth. Um, and at the bottom end, we've just got a six inch up length this time of 012 suplex fluorocarbon to a Tubertini size 18, uh, series 18 hook. So a nice, nice sort of decent size hook, ideal for double maggot, single caster, double caster. And as I say, that's for more holding the, uh, holding the rig back and just sort of inching it through. Then I've got a, a rig that's pretty much a duplicate of that. It's a gram and a quarter, but this one, I've, I've uh, matched this up with the, the pace that we've got on the river today, so I can hold it absolutely still. So this one I've set an inch over depth, same elastic, same main lines, same float again, but in a 1.25. And then the shot in, as you can see, it's a bit tighter down the bottom end. Got number nine droppers, just three of them. And then a size 16 uh, series 18 hook there on the bottom same hook length same main lines as the previous rig so that's for holding the bait dead still can use sections of worm double cast from that like say if i think there's a better fish or two in the peg so it's pretty straightforward today i've had a, a really good plumb around the peg which is crucial when you're fishing rivers make sure you work out where sort of your catching area is going to be and plumb down your peg especially when you know there's a, a bit of pace on it Try working further down the peg to just make sure you've got a good clean run and a nice clean bottom using a 30 gram heavy plummet, dragging it around, make sure there's no branches or any snags or any significant sort of changes in depth on the bottom. And we found a nice sort of clear run where it's just over 10 meters out and I can run the float down probably a good sort of eight or nine feet. There's no much, no need to go any further than that because as I say, the river's barely moving today. So with that said, we'll get into the fishing now, get a bait on the hook and see if we can catch a couple of fish. Right, so we'll go for the first chuck of the session now. As I say, we're putting five balls to start with, and I'm just starting off on that light strung rig with a, uh, a single fluoro maggot on the hook. So we'll have a couple of runs through, see how they've reacted to the ground bait. And then it won't be long before I start to look at loose feeding. Again, seeing as though there's not much pace on the river, I think loose feed today could be the way to go to draw them in. So you can see with the back shot on that rig, I can just hold it against the back shot. That was a bite straight away. And it's important when you're pole fishing on rivers, same as when you're fishing still water, make sure you pick a far bank marker. But crucially, as I say, pick your area where you want to catch the fish. It's another bite there. So it might be the case there's already a few small fish in the peg. So as I say, I've, what I've done today is I've plumbed up in line with the edge of a, a stanchion that we can see on the far, well, so it's not on the far bank, it's halfway along the bridge. That's where I've put the balls of ground bait in. I've plumbed probably five or six feet, there's a fish on, five or six feet to the left of that upstream, because occasionally you can get this moving upstream of your ground bait. It's a small roach that time. And then what I've done is I've plumbed around Crucially, exactly where the ground bait is going to land, and then probably maybe 10 or 15 feet further downstream than that. So that means I know that I've got a clear run where it's fairly level on the bottom left to right, and I've also gone half a section closer in, and as, you know the uh, the dolly butt of the pole, sorry, further out, just to make sure there's no sort of ledges or significant drop-offs, and it is pretty much table flat there. But because of the, the way the river is here as well, what I always like to do on a peg like this is I'll start off plumbing basically on a top four and add a section at a time to work my way out to where I'm likely to fish. And it just gives me an idea of how much the, uh, the riverbed's sloping away from me. So what I've elected to do is actually fish at the, basically the deepest point of the peg. So at least I know there, that's where the bait's going to collect and that's where I think the fish will will generally feel safest, especially with it being a low river. Again, if I go sort of another section or two further out, it starts to shallow up to, there's another fish on. Just bump that one off. It starts to shallow up to, well, towards where that stanchion is, as you'd expect. That was a smaller fish that time, it's just nipped the end of the maggot. So 
just in a nutshell, I've just I've really sort of spent some time this morning just making sure that I've got a really good idea of the layout of the riverbed in front of me. And obviously the advantage with a pole is you can be incredibly accurate with that and get a really good understanding of the layout of the bottom of the riverbed. And also whether it's sandy or gravelly, you know, it's fairly rocky out there, so it's a nice firm riverbed. Getting indications every time we're dropping the floating now. So I'm thinking if I miss another bite, that's when I'll go onto that bulk rig with the pencil float. There we go, that's a fish on now. Because on that bulk rig, that's where I'd expect to catch a better stamp of fish. A slightly better roach that time. So we'll try on the more positive rig now, straight away, just to see if it speeds up the process. There's clearly one or two fish down there. I've already got some bait on the up for this one, so I'm just going to try a, a maggot tipped with a, a fluoro pinky. But the important thing is with this one line that I'm fishing today, I've got several different options of how to attack it, whether it's small fish rigs strung out or bulk, or two more positive rigs for trying to catch quality fish. And I've also got the option of switching to hemp and I'm not so bite straight away. And I can also introduce loose feeding casters and hemp as well. So despite just picking one area of the peg, I've got lots of different ways of fishing it today. So it'll just be a case of working through it and seeing what's the best way to keep the fish in the peg and also keep the stamp of fish up. See how little flows on the river today. It's almost like fishing a, a canal, almost like the, the air and colder. So I think what I'll start doing already is I'll there we go straight away bites as soon as the float's going in. I'll start putting some hemp and casters in. As you can see, I'm loose feeding that pretty much right over the top of where the ground bait is again because the the pace of the river's so slow. Just pulled out that one. Because the pace of the river's so slow, I'm not too worried about doing that. Again, the faster the river's flowing, the further upstream you need to feed off. So if you're fishing, fishing the pole like this, you'd fish up, feed upstream a little bit more. Or if you were fishing on running line, you'd feed, feed sort of in front of you and fish further downstream to compensate for it. So I'm almost tre treating it like a, a canal almost today. Again, you can see with that one gram rig just how quick it settles. It's straight into the peg and fishing immediately. So as I say, if there's a lot of fish in the peg. There we go, biting a fish on straight away. Feels a bit better, this one. You can see how quick we're able to get the bait down and get fishing. Feels like it could be a perch, this. Having said that though, there are a few trout in here. The other good thing with these pencil floats is just how cleanly they come out of the water on the strike as well. If you start hooking more fish this sort of size, that's when going onto one of the heavier rigs with a number eight elastic will be better. Yeah, it's a nice perch. Imagine if you're catching a few of these, it doesn't take long to, to do a weight of them. It's a lovely stamp perch, that. Definitely six or eight ounce, that one. Just took perfectly in the scissors. Really nice stamp fish, you can see on the cold here, just immaculate quality on them as well. Like they've never been caught before.
So the other thing that I'll have to be mindful of as well is when to top up. Because obviously, on a river that's flowing faster, you need to top up more frequently. Obviously, your bait will be getting washed down the peg a lot quicker. Whereas here today, I think we'll probably feed a, a ball or so. I think we'll look at starting off around every 45 minutes. And then obviously, if there's a lot of fish in the peg or if they respond really well to a fresh ball of ground bait going in, then we might feed more regularly. But what I'll also look to do, depending on what I'm catching and how I'm catching, is vary what I'm putting through the ground bait. So say if I was struggling or bites really tail off, it might be the case that I can put a rich ball that's full of pinkies in just to try and get a bit of colour, a bit of attraction into the peg. Or if I feel like there's a few better perch to be caught, again, I can put in a ball that's just really rich in chopped worms. So I've got a lot of options. But we'll start off just loose feeding hemp and casters. Then, like I say, every 45 minutes or so, we'll put another ball in. few funny little indications so might be the case that the fish just haven't settled down properly yet what I'll probably look to do after the first hour or so is try fishing on the caster as well see if that produces a couple of better stamp fish So as you can see, when I'm laying the rigging, I'm swinging the, the bulk downstream, putting the float pretty much over where I'm, or just upstream of where the ground bait's gone in, and holding it back until the bulk swings in and then letting it run down. There we go, it's another fish on. Feels a lot smaller, this one. It looks like a nice stamp roach, actually. We'll just net him, he looks like he's barely hooked. It's a good job I did, because the hook's just dropped out in the net. But lovely condition roach, that one. Again, probably a couple of ounces, maybe three or four. So we'll get back out there and hopefully have a couple more of them. Right, and there's another fish on now. Another one of these roach. So I think what we'll do now that we've we've had a good start for the first sort of 10 minutes or so, I think we'll just try and tick over for a bit, keep trying a few different things and see if we can suss, suss one or two things out about how to try and catch a better stamp of fish. It's early days as yet and it's been a bit sort of changeable already with catching, you know, that's that sort of bigger perch, couple of roach, a few funny missed bites. I think it's probably time we just give it about half an hour, like I say, knuckle down, try and work out how the peg's responding. And then hopefully for the second hour, we can start catching a few better stamp fish and suss one or two things out. Right, so we've just looked another fish now. Feels like a, a small stamp fish on the strung rig, just with a single maggot on. Another one of these roach, actually. It's not a bad stamp.
But what I'm thinking of doing is putting a, a little nugget in now, I think, because it's about time for a top up, about an hour or so into the session. And what I'm going to do is just put a small ball in that's full of pinkies with a little bit of chopped worm as well and just see if it brings some of them better stamp perch into the peg. So all I'm going to do is take probably know, five or six dendrobinas, chop them fairly fine. So I don't think it'll do any harm putting a bit of chopped worm in. A couple of maggots and a pinch of pinkies. Again, there's still a bit of hemp and casters in the mix. And we'll just see if it draws the fish back into the peg. I've noticed I've had a couple more bites from slightly further down the peg as if they've dropped down, so we'll see if they respond to a ball. Again, if they don't, then that should, should give me a good indication that it's going to be a day where just sort of ticking over loose feeding will be better. But after that initial run where we, we did the feast to camera, it sort of tailed off a bit. We've had a couple more roach, but it's been fairly slow going on the, the front with the bites. So it'll be interesting to see if they do come straight to the ball. Again, I've squeezed that one a bit looser. So hopefully make a bit of cloud in the water and we'll see if that draws the fish in. What I've also done with my uh, strung rig and also my bulk rig is just taking about an inch off the depth so I'm probably fishing an inch, maybe an inch and a half off bottom. So again I was missing a couple of bites. So it's as if the fish aren't sort of actively attacking the ground bait as such they're just sort of having a mooch around the general area. I think that's why they've started to drop down the peg a little bit. I say, I don't think they're feeding massively, sort of aggressively at the moment. So I'm just going to cut down on the amount I'm loose feeding as well, and just try and be a bit more careful with the bait. Again, after that initial start, it'd be quite easy to think there's a lot of fish in the peg and start blasting it with loads of hemp and castor, but... So I just want to try and fish the peg a bit more carefully. There's a bite straight away. then hopefully as the session goes on we can start introducing a bit more feed and try and get into some better fish. It's another nice stamp roach. Just about swinging. As you can see with these you can imagine it doesn't take long to build a nice weight and that one just nailed bang in the middle of the top lip and it was a much cleaner bite that time after shallowing up. And the other good thing with having a nice strung rig like this as well is because it's, as I say, the, the river's barely running today, is I can hold on to the rig and see if I'm getting any bites on the drop as well. So it gives me a good read if the fish are coming up in the water and responding to the loose feed that way. But most of the bites have come sort of just after that last drop has settled. So again, with the pace of the river as well being so slow, I'm also, rather than starting the rig off in the same place every time, occasionally I'll start off down the bottom end of the peg, and just let it run a bit, and then try back up at the top. So, I'll say because it's not pulling through that quick, I'm not able to run it all the way down and cover the water as quickly as I'd like, as opposed to when I'm lifting and dropping the rig in and out. Every so often I'm also going sort of to the end of the dolly, but trying a little bit past the feed. Just trying to work out where the fish are and what they're doing. So this time I've started the rig away from the ground bait, so I'm starting it down the peg. See if there's any bites to be had there. And then if I drop in over the ground bait and I get a bite straight away, that's telling me the fish that are coming into the peg are coming straight to the ground bait. So 
Again, just feeding sort of 10 or 15 casters, and about 20 or so grains of hemp. So especially considering we, we're catching roach now, as opposed to what I expected to catch was dace. I think the roach will respond better to the, the loose feed hemp and caster. Whereas if you get dace in the peg, especially when it's running so slow like this, I don't like to loose feed too much because they can go a bit mad and you can start getting a lot of missed bites off them. There's a little indication of another small fish from down the bottom end of the peg. And slightly smaller roach this time, again, hooked perfectly in the top lip. So this next drop in, I'm going to have a look directly over the top of the ground bait. And that'll tell me if they've come straight to the ball of ground bait that I've just introduced. And equally, because I've put a bit of chop worm in, I've got the option still of putting a a worm head on one of those slightly more positive rigs. But again, I'll only do that if I, if I hook a decent perch. At the moment, I'm just trying to get bites from whatever's in the peg. Right, so I've just had a couple of minnows of all things on this uh, short line now. We're probably another hour, hour or so, hour and a half, something like that, into the session since our last update. And what we've done since then is topped up the uh, both lines. The short line I've put in a, another ball of ground bait with chopped worm and a few pinkies in. And the long line I put in another ball just with hemp and casters and the odd pinky. I think it's time to top up again, as I say. I've just had those two minnows on the short line, but after we topped up, we've had a little bit of a run of fish, to be fair, on uh, on both lines. We've had the long line, we've had a few more roach. They suddenly seem to have turned up there, but the bites are incredibly finicky. Like they're barely taking the float under. But I think it's noticeable the river's just started to run a little bit more as well after we've had a little bit of rain. And I think that could have possibly brought the fish on. We've even had a couple on the long line, just fishing with the uh, the pencil style rig. So a bit more positive, we managed to hit a few more bites on that. So like I say, on this line, a couple of pinkies in with the ground bait, bit of chop worm. And hopefully it'll bring the, uh, the roach and the perch back into the peg. I'm giving it a good firm squeeze because it's got plenty of pinkies in there, so they'll help break the ball up nice and quick when it's hit the bottom. Then we'll do the same again on the long line, just with a few casters and a bit of hemp. It's quite noticeable today, we've not had many days to be fair, but probably only had about four or five of them. Most of the fish we've caught have been roach, which I was expecting to catch a few more perch, especially on the short line where we fed it, like I say, with uh, pinkies and chopped worm. But for whatever reason, they've not turned up there in numbers. So after topping that one up, we'll go over the long line. Same again, single maggot. We're just using a single red maggot at the moment. That seems to have brought a few more fish. So we were fishing single fluoro maggot, but for some reason the bite seemed to tail off on that. So switched to a single red maggot and got a couple more bites. And hopefully towards the back end of the session, we might be able to try on the caster. It's an indication straight away as soon as the float went in there. 
There we go, biting the fish on. Feels like it could be a perch, this. We've had a, a couple of hours where it's been fairly slow going. This looks like a decent roach. Well, that's a nice fish to catch. As I say, after the, the river seems to have switched on a bit and started running, the fish seem to have started feeding a bit better. So that's probably the biggest roach of the day, that one really plump fish. Lovely condition on them. I think that's the first time in the session since, uh, I'd say since we started where we've topped up and gone straight in and got a bite immediately. So hopefully the fish on both lines are starting to have a bit of a feed. Again, because I've got these two lines, I'm sort of fishing the, the near side one a bit more negative, feeding it a bit lighter on this, this far line. I can sort of give it a bit more bit more bait, fish, fish a bit more positively. Just to see if I can sort of up the stamp of fish that we're catching. And if there's a few roach like that around, then it doesn't take long for them to go through, uh, you know, casters and, and hemp. So, say if we can keep topping up on that long line with the odd ball of ground bait, keep feeding hemp and caster. We go, that was bite, just lost that one. then we might have a chance towards the latter parts of the session of catching sort of those stamp roach a bit more regularly. And that one, the maggot was just doubled over the hook point. But it was certainly noticeable about sort of an hour ago, getting some really funny indications on the, the strung rig. Managed to hit a couple of them and then straight away thought, go on to the bolt rig, because all the bites were coming pretty much as the bait was touching bottom and straight away we had a run of three or four sort of roach, about two ounce, three ounce, something like that. And it seems now they, they sat right over the ground bait as opposed to earlier on in the session where we had a good start where they were right on top of the feed, then very quickly they seemed to back off and we were nicking the odd fish here and there. Putting that short line, had a, a run of fish there and then just rotated the lines trying to nick odd fish and then, as I say, after resting that long line, we've gone back on it and had a decent run of smallest roach between, like, say, two and three ounce. Right, so as I say, we've just gone back onto this short line now. It's taken a couple of minutes and we've had a bite. Again, one of these nice stamp roach. And the rig I'm using on this short line, as you can see, is the strung rig. I'm just finding it's allowing me to present the bait really nicely, especially at only five metres. I can really work for float, and I think that's, that's part of the reason why I've been able to catch some of the roach on this line, despite feeding it with chopped worm. Notice a lot of the bites that I've had on this, to be fair, have been when I've been holding the float back and just barely sort of tripping it through. And it's a lot easier to do this at a, a short distance as opposed to fishing on, you know, 10 metres. I seem to be getting the bites just as I'm letting, as I've held the float back a little bit and then as soon as I let it run a little bit, that's when I'm getting the bites. But they've been incredibly tentative, like barely pulling the float under. Right, so we're into the last hour of the session now. Once again, we've been chopping and changing for the past sort of hour. Just between the two lines, picked up a few fish on pinkies. Just fishing the strung rig and fishing probably about six inches off the bottom. 
but seeing as though we're into the, like I said, the last hour of the session now, I'm, I've just had a try on the caster. I've had one better roach and another bite straight afterwards. I mean, for a brief spell, we did try on the bottom fishing with um, one of the positive rigs, the Gram and a quarter rig. Fish double maggots on that, and all we managed on this long line was a, a small little minnow. But then we've gone back onto the strung rig with pinkies, caught a couple of decent, decent stamp roach, two or three ounces. That's dried up. We've gone onto the short line, had a couple of fish there. Again, that's died off. And I've just gone onto the long line, as I've said, with caster. And straight away we've had a decent roach and then missed the bite. So hopefully, so they've been feeding it now for several hours. Hopefully they've switched onto the caster and the hemp. Again, we're still fishing pretty much directly over where the ground bait went in. And that's where we've had the bites. But it's, it's pretty clear to, to see now that the fish aren't really getting their heads into the, the ground bait or feeding sort of on the bottom. They just sat just above the ground bait, picking off any of the loose feed that's over the top. And so we've had much cleaner bites and a few more sort of consistent bites just by fishing six inches off the deck. Right, so there we go. That's a bite and a fish on the caster now. Again, feels like a good stamp fish, this. It's amazing how long it's taken them to switch onto it, but I'd say the bites on the caster seem to be much more positive than they were on the pinker. That's a nice dace, is that this time? <laughs> Lovely stamp fish. Quite easy to notice though that the, the stamp of fish on the caster are probably a good ounce, two ounces bigger than they were on the pinker. It was a nice clean bite that shot the float under. Whereas like I say, when we're fishing the pinker, you could tell there was they were sort of messing around with it a bit too much, getting a lot of sort of funny little indications that were really difficult to hit. And it's possible some of those were minnows. I think with the way that the river's fishing, certainly fishing single caster like this and fishing six inches off bottom, I think that's given us the best chance of catching a bonus fish like a big roach. So the perch definitely haven't shown in numbers today, so I don't think there's, it's worth investing any time fishing the worm and trying to target those. And there's even every chance of a chub as well fishing caster like this. Same again like I was doing on the short line with this. I'm just trying to let the float run a short way and then just hold it back, let the caster try and rise up a little bit. And just give this fish a bit of chance to see it. And it's not really worked particularly well just running the float through the peg as quick as we can today, being considering how slow it's, it's moving as well. It's not really giving us too many options in terms of holding the float back and getting the bait to rise up properly, like you would be able to in a faster peg. But just sort of checking the float every so often and holding it pretty much so it stays bang in line with the far bank marker. Right, so there we go, that's a bite on the caster and I think we'll probably call this one the last of the session. I'd say it's been a steady day today, ticking over. We've had to rotate the two lines. Like I say, we started off trying to just fished the one today but as it turns out the fishing's been a bit more difficult so we put the second line in and it's allowed us to rest the long line as it turns out the last hour or so has been quite good catching a few stamp roach like that a couple a bit bigger and that dace as well on the long line so as I say it's been an interesting day today we've had to work for every bite that we've got and it's been tough we've caught mainly roach say a few dace and a few perch as well and a couple of minnows 
But as I say, it's, it's been one of those sort of days we've had to chop and change. I say, putting the chop worm in short on the pinkies, although we were expecting to catch perch there, we've had a few roach, we've had a dace, and one or two perch on it. Like I say, that long line started off all right. We had a tough sort of mid, mid spell where we rotated the two lines, and then we finished up catching fairly well on casters across. So, I said, well, with that said, we'll wrap up the session now, get the net out and have a look at what we've caught. All right, so as you can see there, that's our final net of fish. As I said earlier, it's been a bit of a tough day today. We've had to chop and change a few things to try and keep the fish coming, but we've got a fair few pound of roach in there, a couple of perch and the odd dace as well. So we've had a nice mixed bag, even had a little gudgeon as well thrown in. But hopefully what we've run through today gives you a bit of an idea about how we sort of tackle this kind of peg on the river calder for pole fishing. As I say, we'd have liked to have sort of piled the bait in today, but it's turns out we've had to shop and change and it's been a nice enjoyable day catching a few fish on casters as well as maggots and pinkies so as I say it's a lovely night of fish that we'll get in return now but as always from last cast thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on that next episode